à l'occasion du 25e anniversaire du premier roman des aventures d'Harry Potter, le gibert Joseph de Toulouse s'est transformé en poudlard le temps d'une journée. La célèbre librairie de la rue du Thor a accueilli les clients dans un décor à l'image du monde des sorciers. Entre animation et jeux concours, les fans ont pu également rencontrer Sean Biggerstaff, celui qui dans les films a joué le rôle d'Olivier Dubois. Et vous vous doutez bien qu'en tant que fan de la saga, je me suis rendu sur place pour aller à la rencontre de l'acteur qui a gentiment accepté de répondre à mes questions. Merci à la formidable équipe de Gibert Joseph d'avoir rendu cette journée magique. Vous pouvez rejoindre leurs réseaux sociaux ainsi que les miens et ceux du web toulousain. L'interview de Sean Biggerstaff, ça commence maintenant. Eh bien bonjour Sean Biggerstaff. Euh, bonjour, hello. Ah, you speak French, just euh, Non, un petit peu, un petit peu. vraiment non. <rire> Merci d'avoir accepté de répondre à ces questions. Tu es à Toulouse ici pour fêter le 25e anniversaire du premier tome d'Harry Potter. Qu'est-ce que ça représente pour toi Qu'est-ce que ça te fait de savoir que 25 ans après, ça soit encore d'actualité et que tu sois encore là pour en parler uh, How do I explain it I can't explain it. I don't, I don't, I, I don't understand it at all. Um, we, were just, we were just talking about this um, at lunch, actually. Uh, it's weird for those of us that were, that were in it. I think it's... Um, We're almost kind of insulated from the phenomenon of Harry Potter. We're kind of in the eye of the storm, you know, and, and actually what the phenomenon is like for the fans. Um, I feel like I don't really have any insight into that, you know, in a weird way. I'm kind of slightly detached from it. Um, but it's an amazing privilege to still um, be asked to come to various places all over the world and, and, um, and meet people uh, 20 years later. I mean, yeah, at the time when, it, when we were... Filming the first movie um, only had a very slowly growing sense of, of how big it was going to be. But even then, even when it was huge at the time, you know, most films which are enormous when they come out are not, don't, you know, continue to be that big a deal for decades. So there was no, we had no sense of, of what lay ahead, even when it was the, the huge success that it was. Um, and yet, as you say, I mean, not only is it still here, it's still as big, if anything, it's still growing. Um, which is, is, is crazy. Il y a 23 ans de ça, tu étais sur le plateau de tournage du premier Harry Potter. Tu étais déjà un tout petit peu plus grand que Rupert Green, Emma Watson et, et Daniel Radcliffe. Comment tu t'es intégré et surtout, est-ce que tu te souviens de bah, ton premier jour de tournage, ton premier souvenir avec Harry Potter uh, I can remember my first day of filming because it was the, uh, my kind of biggest scene in the whole series was right at the start. So the scene where I teach him the rules of the game was the first thing that I shot. Uh, I can't remember now how many days that took, if it was just one or if we were at it for a while. But yeah, that was the first day. And that was kind of manageable because it was a, we weren't in the big studio yet and it was a small scene that was just the two actors kind of thing. So it was sort of, I didn't freak out about how big, <laughs> about how big the movie was yet. Um, so it was good to get my most important part out of the way in a kind of relatively low key um, situation. Uh, and in terms of fitting in with the other kids, well, I sort of didn't really. I mean, I was, I was, I'd already left school, so when I was on set, I didn't, I didn't have to go to lessons. I didn't have a chaperone. When I wasn't needed on set, I would just be in, in my own dressing room, you know, playing my guitar and listening to music and reading books and, and uh, just enjoying myself. Whereas they all had to go from set straight to their tutors and their classrooms and stuff. And then also, I left after two movies, so they kind of really grew up together. Yeah. Um, I'd already grown up, so although I, I got on great with, with the kids for the most part, I didn't, um, we didn't. We didn't share, I didn't share in that experience of being, of, of set being where I grew up. Um, yeah, I was a bit, I was a bit older. J'ai regardé ton Instagram et j'ai vu cette photo avec euh, Robbie Coltrane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Et euh, vous êtes vu après les films, vous avez continué à entretenir cette relation. Est-ce que tu peux nous en dire un petit peu plus euh, sur votre rapport? So that was for um, a really odd project, which it was an episode of... Um, a Sky series called Urban Myths, which is a kind of anthology. Each episode is a standalone story. Uh, and a, a friend of mine who's a director called Richard Cousin Smith did this episode, um, which is about Orson Welles. Uh, it's, it's sort of based on a, on a true story, but it takes wild liberties with it. So the actual events of, of the show are not, are not true at all. Um, but so Robbie plays Or Orson Welles and I play a um, naive young, um, like, worker at a TV channel uh, and I think it was what was it it was called F for faking him and I think I could be wrong but I think I have the the uh, unasked for honor of being the last person ever to shoot a scene with mm. with Robbie Coltrane wow because the last thing that we shot on that was um on the last night was a scene in a, in a in a van with just me and Robbie 
and I don't think he filmed anything, any other. I mean, he, he he was on camera for interviews and stuff after that, but I don't think he filmed any other um, drama after that moment. So I, th I think I may have been the last person ever to to work with him in that way, which is, I mean, I wish I wasn't because I wish he was still here, but it's kind of a an honor in a way. On va faire un petit jeu sur Harry Potter. Je vais te dire quelques mots qui sont traduits en français. Tu dois trouver le mot original. Let's see. Okay. First word. Ser d'aigle. Ser d'aigle. Yeah. No idea. Sorry. It's Ravenclaw. Ser d'aigle is ra Ravenclaw. All right. Okay. okay. And does it translate as Ravenclaw? Yeah. All right. Okay. Professeur Rogue. Uh, oh, Snape. Snape. Yeah. yeah. Moldu. Moldu. Ouais. Don't know. Muggle. Oh, Muggle. Okay. Sorry, I should have guessed that one. <laughs> Long du bas. Long bottom. Never, oh, yeah. never long bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mandragor. Oh, is that Voldemort? No. No. Mandrake. Mandrake. Ah. Yeah. And the last? Dubois. Wood. Wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> et dernière question, last question. Si demain Warner Bros. te rappelle et te dit, on va reprendre la saga Harry Potter, on a besoin de toi, est-ce que ça t'intéresse ou au contraire tu préfères laisser les films derrière toi? For another Potter film? Oh God. I don't know. I mean, obviously in principle, yeah, sure, it'd be great. I mean, I, I don't, th I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> um, uh, but. Yeah, uh, oh god. It's, it sounds weird to even hesitate to say yes to something like that, but at the same time, like, it was such a kind of huge thing that, and it was so popular and, and people responded so well to my part of it that it feels like you can't, like, all you could do is make this worse. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and you're not gonna, you're not gonna improve upon people's experience. Well, you I mean, you, you might, but the, cha the chances of you improving upon people's experience of this by going back and doing more of it are, are, pretty low um, so I'd be I'd be quite I don't know I don't know what I would think of it unless and until it happened but it's not going to happen <laughs> <So>. <laughs> ok bien merci beaucoup thank you so much thank you yeah.